Fakhruddin G. Ibrahim passed away on 7th January 2020. But who was he? And what was his impact on Pakistan? Ibrahim was born in 1928 in Ahmedabad, Bombay Presidency, British India. In 1945, he attended the Gujarat Vidyapith, where he earned his LLB with distinction in 1949. He moved to Pakistan in 1950. Ibrahim's first foray into public life was in 1954, during the student protests against the regime of Ayub Khan. Ibrahim took on cases pro bono of those being persecuted by the state because of their demands for democratic rights. In 1961, Ibrahim established his own law firm, Fakhruddin Ibrahim and Company, in Karachi. Ibrahim earned himself a reputation as a human rights lawyer due to the legal counsel he provided the working class, oppressed religious groups, and illegally detained prisoners. The stance Ibrahim is most known for, however, occurred in 1981, when despite being an ad hoc judge in the Supreme Court appointed only earlier that year, he refused to take a fresh oath under the provisional constitutional order offered by Ziaul Haq's military government. His refusal came for two very important reasons. The PCO undermined the independence of the judiciary. Furthermore, it negated an earlier Supreme Court judgment that had not granted complete legitimacy to Ziaul Haq's military government. The resignation did not put a pause on Ibrahim's work, however. Staying true to his dedication to democratic rights, he went on to become one of the founders of the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan in 1987. Ibrahim re-entered political life when then-Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto appointed him the 18th governor of Sindh. It was in 1990, under his tenure, that the Citizen Police Liaison Committee, CPLC, was established. CPLC is a non-political statutory organization which provides relief to victims of crimes and provides technical support to LEAs. CPLC has since assisted law enforcement agencies, aided citizens as well as police families to navigate the system, and provided relief to families of officers of LEAs who passed away on duty. But he served in that position for only two years before tendering his resignation, due to his opposition to the dismissal of the Benazir government by then-president Ghulam Ishaq Khan. He later went on to serve as law minister in the interim government of 1993. And after the elections, during Benazir Bhutto's second term in office, Ibrahim was appointed the Attorney General for Pakistan. He served as Attorney General for only 159 days and resigned when the government engaged another counsel in a case without his knowledge. In 1996, Ibrahim was again made interim law minister. Despite the short amount of time he was in charge, he drafted the first Freedom of Information Bill in Pakistan, which was passed in 1997. The article was later revoked and replaced by the 2002 Freedom of Information Act that is in place till date. He also proposed an amendment to the election provisional law in Pakistan that would require candidates to disclose their financial documents. The government at the time, however, opposed the amendment. A decade later, at the age of 79, Ibrahim joined the lawyers' movement in opposition to General Musharraf suspending Chaudhary Iftikhar Hussain, the Chief Justice of Pakistan at the time. The movement not only restored Chaudhary Iftikhar Hussain as Chief Justice of Pakistan, but also paved the way for the fall of General Musharraf's military regime. In 2013, at age 85, he emerged as a popular choice for the position of Chief Election Commissioner for the general elections in 2013. However, Following the general election, when the Supreme Court ordered the commission to hold presidential polls ahead of its original schedule, ECP President Ibrahim resigned. The order was a case of institutional overreach, since scheduling presidential elections constitutionally comes under the domain of the ECP. This was the last of Fakhrubai in the public eye, but in a country where people cling on to power, Fakhruddin Ibrahim's commitment to prioritizing principles over position makes him stand out. It was these qualities that led him to being held in such high esteem by his colleagues. Fakhrubai, as he was commonly addressed by young and old, was a great man. And in one sentence, I would like to describe him as a short person, but a tall man. My association with him began in 1988-89, when I was the chairman of the Said Association and the law and order situation was pretty bad in the city. So we held a citizen's reception in the honor of the governor, who at that time was Fakhrubai. And during that reception, the idea of CPLC was floated in a common language, Thana committees. He was a humble person, down to earth, and his simple 
kind of attitude and I feel that if we really want to pay tributes to the man, we should try and follow in his footsteps.